Alright guys, so I have uh, decided to create another video. I don't do this that often, but it has been requested that I show some of the techniques I use for detailing or antiquing or pretty much making your aircraft just look all dirty like they were back when uh, when they were not required to, to clean them up as much. So, um, so to do that, that is what this video is going to be about this time. Uh, I'll keep it short and sweet so that uh, you're not stuck there watching too much. So I know that other people do other techniques. I try to keep it simple, as fast as you can, but yet as good as you can so that uh, you're out there flying more than you're inside just messing around. But here we go. So essentially what I've got going on is I've got... Uh, I've got one of these central pneumatic airbrush sets, bought it at Harbor Freight, I think it was about 60 bucks, not too much. It comes with a pretty cheap little airbrush, simple, but it does the job. Um, not a great one, but uh, there's definitely more expensive ones that you can get, but for this purpose there's no need for it. Because um, I don't do anything really crazy. Um, for detailing um, and really, really fine detail. There are other ones for that. Uh, let's see. So to, to start, so I got a brand new fresh wing. It's never been used. Um, when I had an issue with one of my F4s, which right here, and when it uh, stalled on me and it, it fell into some power lines, I had to replace the wings. And so I have a little fresh wing to be able to show you some of the, the techniques that I do um, for the grubby look. So, to start, I always, uh, I always run a little bit of water through my airbrush on, uh, onto just a, a plain old simple, um, piece of wood, paper, anything like that, just to, just to clear it, make sure that everything's a little bit lubricated inside. Um, then, I break into my pre-mixed uh, dirty paint. So it's essentially what it is, is it is uh, acrylic fast drying paint. This is the apple, apple barrel kind. I believe I got that at Walmart. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone to make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about. So this is just simple black. Uh, it dries flat, it's not glossy, and it has that dirty appeal like grease or Hydraulic fluid had you know went down the side of the aircraft, or grubby maintainer hands because as we all know, when we were working on aircraft back when we really did not care how dirty the airplane got at the time. We just wanted to get it fixed and get it flying again. So that is uh, what we did. Um, so I have it pre-mixed up. Um, what I try to do. These are the larger. Shoot, I don't even know. Two ounce, I think. Yeah, about two ounces, maybe maybe one and a half ounce uh, bottles. I bought them on Amazon, pretty cheap. We got about ten of them. Um, so what I do is I fill it about a quarter of the way, no, a third of the way, up with uh, actual paint, and then the rest of it is all water. Shake it up really good, and uh, usually does a pretty good job with getting through these airbrushes without clogging it up or binding or whatnot. Um, if I'm trying to paint a whole airplane or fuselage, I mix it a little bit thicker than that, and then I just open up the pan a bit and, uh, and lay it out pretty thick so that we're not on there for a whole t bunch of time. Uh, anyway, so I got the new one on there, so now I just gotta make sure that it's gonna cycle through. We got some black paint coming through there. Um, it's gonna be a bit wet. So what you want to do is you want to have it where when you press it down, you're getting nothing. I don't know if you can see that, but there's nothing coming out. But if I light press, you can see little itty bitty lines. So I'll hold it right there. So you can see it. So I'm light pressing all oh, those little bitty lines. So fine lines. You can you can 
press it down and get more. So thick, the more you press back, the better it is in regards to the thickness of paint. So with this paint, it will dry very, very nice. If you look right here, you, you really can't go wrong just by applying it however you want. Because the best part is, is with, with doing detail like this, the aircraft itself is never exact. You know, it's not a painted line, it's not anything. It's, it's, it's essentially, nature has, has blown it back, it's dripped, gravity, all that. And it's going to do whatever it wanted to do. So however you apply it, add your own creativity to it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start on this panel here. I always try to spray as if the wind itself is, is in effect, so kind of backwards. So if it does overspray, it kind of looks like it was supposed to be there or the wind pushed it back. So what I'm going to do is start hitting the lines. I'm going to kind of bring this down and then I'll try and tilt it up a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on a little bit. Sorry for all this. This is the first time videoing and doing this. So let's see how it goes. So don't know if you can see that here. Ah. It's horrible. All right, we'll start up here. Right. Pulling it back, that was a little thick. And you just kind of airbrush around where you want. Lines don't need to be perfect. Like I said, they kind of do their own thing. So with this paint, when you apply it, it looks rather thick at first and wet. But the wet goes away. If you get little blotches like that, it's because you stayed in there in the line or in the area too long. But you can kind of just blow on it with just the air. If you remember me showing you where you can press it down and you get nothing, well, you can do that with this. So you can get the nothing and, and dry where you did. So smooth movements is always going to be better. But we all shake a little bit. It makes it kind of hard to, to stay in there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to keep hitting all these panels. And you can kind of see it's going on there fairly, fairly thick at first. It looks like it at least. that up and you just essentially keep going with all of it you know the closer you get the more fine detail you're gonna get but you have to press less uh, for your, your flow on the, the panel Just keep going on the lines, and if you stay continuous as much as you can, you'll get a better product. From what I found, again, other people have better techniques. Again, I, I still think that I'm a little bit amateur on this, but I enjoy it. That's the key. Let me take a look at that. Can you see that already? I mean, it, it's definitely doing some lines pretty good in there. So what you do is you get all these lines as, as good as you can and as straight as you can. But if you don't get it straight, that's 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 all right. You know what I mean? You can you can come back and, and kind of blend. Um, what I do for flaps, for the areas in the flaps, the majority of those are really gross. What I do is I hold them down to where they're fully extended and I will hit them up pretty good with black. But then I'll keep the angle of the flow and I'll kind of do some burst backs of the, the grease. I mean, you don't need to do it much, but on some airplanes they are just exceptionally dirty. 
And so what that does is when your when your flaps all back and in there, it, it kind of highlights inside that area instead of it being non-painted. So when you fold it down, it gets rid of that non-antique look. Um, some of the other things that I do, try and pull some slack up here, is these fuel panels that you see in all these little access panels. Uh, on a lot of aircraft, they, they leak. They leak really bad. So what I do is I shade around the outside of them as good as I can. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll tilt it back and go with the airflow as much as I can and do a little burst back so it looks like they, they've been leaking. So I know that one of the things when we went into the desert, a lot of the options with the, the sand, um, the, the sand would, would actually hit that oil or fuel or whatever would on there and it would stick and it would just make it look like a giant mess all the way back on there. Um, so that's one of the things I do. The other thing I do is I can get a piece of paper or tape and grab a piece of that real quick. So I can't find a piece of tape right now or whatnot, but anyway, so if you've got a flap or a, a, a elevator, not an elevator, a flapper on or whatever that comes up on the top, spoiler on, a spoiler on, that's what it is. A spoiler on that comes up from the top surface like the F4 Phantom does, usually this area will be fairly clean, but yet behind it you'll have all kinds of roughness because of where the, the, the air ends up meeting on there. So what I do, so you can get something with a clean surface on there, you can lay it on that clean surface and then just hit airbrushing right behind it and that'll give that, that look like like that panel itself has been moving in flight and, and not affected by any of this dirty. So I'm going to kind of turn it, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to do that and I'm going to go with the flow of air and I'm going to go at a distance and kind of hit it and kind of hit it so that it, it looks like, you know, the, the paint itself has just been flying in the wind. And so what that does is it draws the paint behind it and now you've got let's dry it up with some air and now you've got some antiquing that's gone on behind that panel and so you just gotta go around and as much as you can you just hit all these little things and just add your own little special to it same for flaps up here so usually the flap itself on the front side is always clean but you can like I said you can hold something up there and kinda Kind of give it that. We have a hydraulic leak or had a leak or too much grease installed or, or whatnot, and it decided to blow out everywhere. And uh, the Rhino was definitely one of those airplanes that, that that was dirty as dirty got because they didn't worry about um, the airplane that much. Look at that! I already smudged up some spots on there with my finger um, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and blend that in by making it making it part of the show I guess if that makes any sense so blend it out make it unique kind of hit some of this wing so it looks like it's blowing back. And that's how you make a dirty airplane. Again, that's not the greatest look that I've done because uh, a little shaky reaching over the table for the camera to be able to, to see it. But usually you can get your you know two hands in there and up against your body like as if you're taking photos and, and do some really nice edges um, on there. Um, I like to I like to do missile missile rail streaks, you know, where the missile shot off the jet. I like to do where the landing gear hits, where the landing gear will hit uh, directly in line with the flaps, because when the flaps are down, um, it makes huge messes behind everything, all the rocks, all the gravel, all the tire, all that. 
it just ends up making giant messes on flaps and all that. So I like to try and portray that as well as I can. But uh, all in all, I, I hope that this has been a little bit informative. Um, I like doing it, especially to these Vietnam era birds where they were, they were set on getting them up as fast as they could and, and uh, you know, they, were, they seemed like they were kind of an expendable airplane at the time. But that is, that is what I do and then after I'm done with it, I, I always try and get the paint out as much as I can and then run my, uh, my clearing water again back into and just uh, make sure that everything is good to go for the next airplane that, that wants to get customized. And so that is my story on how I, I do some detailing. Um, I hope it's been informative and uh, stay tuned for the next item of request and we'll, uh, we'll see about doing, uh, doing another video here and there on how I do things. So thanks for watching and hope that uh, it was informative. Take care.